The second thing I wanted to show you here, and we'll break out to show this, is that when I enabled the HTTP secure server, find that, okay, it is generating a 1024-bit RSA. So we actually have two public keys on this router, the one that we're using for our SSH public key and then our HTTPS public key. To show these, you do a show crypto key, I believe it's my public key, yeah. It's gonna show you the public keys that are associated with this router. Pub means public in this case. Hit enter. Whoops, oh, I need to specify RSA. And you can see here that the key name r1.packetlab.com, that's our SSH key. I'll even tell you when it was generated. I don't have the clock on here, so that's kind of meaningless. This is the key that was used for HTTP, and that is the self-signed key. So I don't know if that's much value to you, but you can have multiple public keys on a router. Okay, what I want to do here is I wanted to show you how SSH passes on the username to the device that you're logging into. So what I did on R2 was I created two usernames. One is Packet Lab, one is not Packet Lab. And then I've gone under the console line and I said, I'll use a local username database to verify users that are logging in via the console line. So I'm gonna to have to log in now with one of these two accounts that both have privilege level 15. And I'm going to choose Packet Lab. So now if I do a show users, I'm logged in on the console line as Packet Lab. So if I SSH to SSH and that 1.12.1, before we had to specify a username, now we shouldn't have to because what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, I'm going to access R1 using SSH as my protocol and along with that I'm going to pass along this username. And because this username exists on R1, I should be able to log in simply by giving the password for this username, which is conveniently Packet Lab. Booyah. So now if I do a show users on R1, you can see that Packet Lab has come in through the VTY line zero. So SSH has passed that on. That it's good to know because you know in production a lot of times you're gonna be logged in. I mean the vast majority of times you're gonna be logged in with a username. If you're on the console line and you haven't set up usernames for the console line, it can be a little bit weird if you're connected and you're not logged in with a specific username and then you SSH to another device you know like why is it not letting me in it's just one of those things it's part of the protocol it's expected behavior but if you don't see it it's an unexpected behavior so let's take this to the next extreme here and show you one other bit that goes along with this so I'm going to use not packet lab and now if I do a show users on R2 I am logged in it doesn't show me the whole thing because it's got a character restriction here but I'm logged in on console port zero obviously <laughs> I've been talking too much, I'm gibbering. So now if I SSH to R1, what's gonna happen is it's gonna access R1 using SSH and it's gonna pass along this not packet lab. Unfortunately, not packet lab does not exist on SS on on R1. But we're not gonna know that because we're going to get the password and I'm gonna just type in packet lab. I might freeze this. And I will, one second. And that exhibited some interesting behavior. Uh, because normally after three failed attempts, I should have been booted out. It gave me six shots. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I might actually run some debugging on this later, but that this is running long anyway, so it'll give you authentication fail. The reason for that is that it's passing along not packet lab. Not packet lab does not exist on R1. So if you have a situation where the username that you're logged in with does not exist on the other device, that's when it's really good to know how to specify the username. If I specify packet lab, even though I'm logged in as not Packet Lab, when I SSH over there, I am able to log in. And you can see here I'm logged in as Packet Lab. So you could change the username with this command. Uh, a lot of times you're just going to use it when there isn't one specified because in a normal environment you would have your username on all the devices. But it's good to know this because this can hit you and you'll be like, what the hell? And a lot of times when this happens, it's when you're troubleshooting something. Something's broke, you're in the console line, and then this stuff happens and you're like, just you don't have the time you get frustrated it's good to know now to at least lab it up once and see it so just remember that it passes along the username I really thought this would be a shorter lesson it's running a little bit long I want to get to configuring the optional characteristics of SSH luckily these are all from global configuration mode and that's where we're at right now on R1 and they all start with IP SSH and before we do that let me go ahead and do show IP SSH so this is our verification command and 
this command shows you how it's how your SSH is set up on the device that you're on. So you can see that we have version 1.99, which means we're uh, able to run um, version 1 and version 2 of SSH. Our authentication timeout is 120 seconds, and our authentication retries are three. So it shows you three pieces of information, not everything that you can configure on that you can configure under SSH, but it gives you the biggies. So now, as I said, IP SSH. Um, this is really nice because all the commands are under this and you can see here they are. Today we're just going to look at four of these guys. We're going to start out with the authentication retries and by default, as we can see up here, it's three. Let's go ahead and set it to one and then I'm going to go ahead and change the timeout as well. By default, it is 120 seconds, which is two minutes. That seems long to me. Let's make it 15 seconds. As I said in the theory, this timeout is during the login process. This is not the um, idle timeout. If you connected from R2 to R1 via SSH and didn't type anything uh, for 120 seconds, it's not going to log you out. That's the idle timeout, and that is set to 10 minutes on most platforms by default. So that's a completely different setting. That setting actually affects all connections to the VTY line, and that's why it's configured under the VTY line. I will stop talking now and do a do show IP SSH to verify our changes. And we have made the changes. You know what? While we're here, let's go ahead and make one more. And that's let's hard code our version. And this is something you might want to do in your production environment. Uh, SSH1 has some security holes to it. So if you can, it's better to run SSH version 2. So let's do ahead, go ahead and IP SSH version. And you can see our choices are 1 and 2. Let's hard code it to 2 and hit enter. And I will go ahead and verify that that has taken place and you can see here we're running version 2 so now let's go over to R2 here okay I want to make sure that I was logged in with the username that actually exists on R1 okay so we were able to log in and um, I just want to show the versioning so I didn't specify a version so by default I can use I'm running in compatibility mode so I can use either so what do you think I'm running in right now do you think I'm running in version 1, version 2, or the compatibility mode, the 1.99. 1.99 is interesting because we specified here, if I do a show IP SSH, we specified only version 2. So what's going on here? But we do see that no SSH v1 server connections are running. So let's go ahead and log out and try to log back in again by specifying version 1. Let's see if that takes care of it. Here we go it's not going to allow us to do this because we're only allowing version 2 on here. So you can see it show up in compatibility mode, but actually only version 2 is available. If I were to specify version 2, it would be good to go. So a little bit confusing there because when you SSH to the device and you don't specify the version, it's going to run in compatibility mode saying that it will it can use either it's going to prefer version 2 if that's available and uh, even though we had tied down in the IPSSH command that R1 only use version 2.0 when we made the connection we were running compatibility mode we were using version 2.0 but it was a little bit confusing when we actually specify it's showing us what we're using. So this is showing you what you're using. So technically here you're using compatibility mode. Version 2 is the only one that's allowed and we could and we verified that with this guy. So if you see this, that means that you might want to change the uh, version that you're using to SSH to your device. Okay, in the interest of wrapping this up sooner rather than later, what I did was on R2, I configured at least the basic configuration for SSH because the command I'm looking at here is the IP SSH source interface. Uh, I've got two loopbacks on these devices, one on R1 and on, on R2. It's uh, The loopback on R2 is 2.2.2.2 slash 32. So what I'm doing is I'm saying any uh, SSH connections from this device, have them source from that address rather than the address of the outgoing interface. So to, by default, if I was to SSH here without this enabled, it would show up as the source address being 10.1.12.2, which is the outbound interface that's taken. It's the IP address of the outbound interface connecting to R1. Uh, this really doesn't help you much on the SSH server. This is more of a client feature. So I've gone ahead and I have SSH to R1, 
And now if I do a show users, what you can see here is that I'm connected on VTY line zero and my location, my source is 2.2.2.2. This may or may not be something that you want to set up in your network. I know a lot of networks do this. They like to reference the loopback interface, kind of trivial to me, but whatever floats your boat. The one thing that I would mention here is that in this case, you do have to have routing between these two devices. I had to put in static default route because by default, these routes won't be able to reach each other because they're not directly connected.